Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. It's October 18th and I'm heading back into that blind that I moved into this field three days ago when the farmer pulled out of there with the combine the day that he picked it. This is one of the spots where we really expect to see, or we really hope to see, uh, this buck that we're calling Lefty. It's right about in the middle of what we believe to be his range right now. It's a little bit warm today. It's probably uh, low 70s which you know, ideally would be 20 degrees cooler than this, but we've seen some pretty, pretty decent uh, borderline daylight buck activity here during the past week, and it's been fairly warm. So I don't know if the deer are adapting to it, but uh, uh, it's not enough to scare me away. I'm definitely gonna go back and give it a try. Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Hoyt Archery. Fuse Accessories, Realtree, Muddy Outdoors, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Scott Archery, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Easton Arrows, RTP Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Ozonics, Wilderness Athlete, Grizzly Coolers, Redneck Hunting Blinds, and Nikon. about 35 minutes left here and not a single deer has come out yet there's no reason why they shouldn't I mean, the conditions are nice it is just a tad warm but uh, you know we've seen deer move on days like this so I'm just gonna keep waiting and watching out the window I don't know if you noticed but we forgot to bring our furniture in our blind here so I'm sitting on the floor and if you would have checked in five minutes ago you'd have found me sleeping on the floor. So it's kind of nice when there's no furniture, there's lots of room to lay down in here. But uh, probably better stay awake now because we're getting down to that moment in the day or that period of the day when something good might happen. just talking about how much time we had left and we figured we had about 10 minutes left and uh, we hadn't seen a single deer on this on this field we saw two does across on the other side 
And uh, and Zach looked out and said, there's a deer. And I looked out and said, well, that's him. I mean, it was Lefty. And, you know, fortunately, I've got uh, lighted side pins on the fuse side. And I turned it on quick and I drew back and he's, you know, it's 38 yards across the field. And he was on this side of the edge. So I put the 30 yard pin and squeezed it off and thump and he, he ran along that edge, but he was falling when I last saw him uh, go past the end of the field. So, like I said, I mean, I didn't have time to even get nervous. It was literally just a few seconds and there was the shot. But now, uh, now it's starting to catch up with me. I'm shaking a little bit now, but uh, we'll calm down a few minutes here um, and, and rest and make sure that you know, we get our composure before heading over there. Because I don't want to just go running over there right now and you know, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure he was going down when, when he went out of sight there. Uh, so that was pretty exciting. Uh, like I said, hopefully we got him. I mean, he was, I'm itching to go over there and look, but I'm pretty sure he was going down. So we'll give it a few minutes and then we'll go take a look. See where he broke that one tine off. He'd have broken off much more. I'm, I'm thinking I probably would have shot him, but just a cool old deer. He's a buck that we got a lot of history with, and like I said, I mean, that's where a bunch of the satisfaction comes from. You're not always going to kill. I mean, obviously this is a beautiful, nice, high-scoring, mature buck. Well, he's not high-scoring, but he's a beautiful, mature buck. Um, you're not always going to kill bucks with big antlers, but. You know, if you kind of keep track of the deer that you're hunting with trail cameras and filming the way that we do, you can get a lot of history on the deer. And that way, you make it more of a personal quest when you go after them. And when you finally get them, there's a lot more satisfaction involved. So he's a, he's a cool buck. Um, couldn't be happier. He was the number one target going into this season. Here we are on the 18th of October, and he's already dead. So a lot of things kind of fell in, in place for us today to make this happen. I got Lefty back out today, cleaned him up so you can get a little bit better look at him. I want to talk real quick about the history that we've had with this buck over the past uh, three seasons now. If you go all the way back to 2013, we think he was a two-year-old at that point. So that would make him five years old now. You know, he showed a lot of potential then, but obviously it wasn't a deer that we were targeting or anything like that. It was just a deer that we noticed. Then the next season, I was hunting out of a redneck blind about I was just a few hundred yards from here pretty consistently. So that would have been in 2014 when I was trying to kill this buck that we had nicknamed Lucky. Well, this buck was living there too. And he was starting to show some pretty good character. His left side was you know, taking some, some mass and some shape to it, but his right side was starting to fill in. It wasn't just the, the same uh, big long fork that he had as a two-year-old. We paid attention to this deer that year for sure. Every, in fact, every time he showed up, I'd grab my bow thinking that he was a shooter. So he was high on the watch list for the following year. We really wanted to see what that deer turned into. We found a shed off him that winter, and it was in that same general area again, uh, in that direction about maybe 400 yards. So that was helping us to narrow down or continue uh, to, to uh, uh, feel comfortable that we knew where this deer was living. Prior to the 2015 season, this buck was popping up on the trail camera consistently. We had lots of pictures of him, but now he'd really blown up. Knowing that he was a four-year-old, there was a dilemma of trying to decide whether or not to target that buck. We never saw the buck during the 2015 season. We hunted that area quite a bit and uh, just hoping to at least film him. So there was a little bit of, of apprehension as to whether or not this buck was still on the farm coming into the 2016. I put the cameras out there in, in uh, sometime around the 10th of September and immediately he was right back on there again. Right away, that was the number one buck on, on my list. The interesting thing was, Lefty had not really grown much from age four to age five. And we thought this deer was gonna make this big jump. He might have added a little bit. He added one point on the left beam, which he's now broken off. I have a corn stalk here that represents that tine. So that's what he looked like. 
Otherwise, he got smaller on his right beam and his left beam picked up the difference. I spent a lot of time running cameras all over the areas where I thought that Lefty might be living. And I never picked up pictures of him except in two spots, right back over there by that redneck blind. And then there's another cornfield behind me, another little small one acre cornfield. And we ran camera over there. You, you move cameras around and you try to find the boundaries of a buck's range. But to the extent that we understood where he was living, this was the middle of it. And as it turned out, I mean, it was a fluke, of course, that he was the only deer out. Uh, five minutes left, 10 minutes left of legal shooting time, he popped out. And we were thinking about packing up and getting out of here because it had been such a slow evening. You know, it turned into a pretty fast evening in just a, a, a few moments time there. I shot this buck on October 18th, and I've only killed a very small number of mature bucks in October, or at least this early in October. Normally, it just seems like it's hard for me to get these older bucks on daylight patterns in October. And everybody talks about the October lull, and, and biologists will say that it doesn't exist, but you know, for sure, uh, the majority of our bucks go underground during this period, anywhere from gosh, all the way through the first three weeks of October, it seems. The lull is not just daylight movement. I think the lull is just the bucks aren't moving hardly at all. Uh, they, they seem like they're hanging back in the cover. Maybe they're eating acorns, browse. You know, if anything, this hunt has taught me one good lesson is uh, you never take anything for granted. Uh, I never would have expected yesterday when the hunt started to play out that we were gonna kill this buck. It was warm and still, and he was the only deer that came out. Normally, that's not the case. This guy was the first one out and the only one out. There's no such thing as always or never. Uh, once in a while, you're gonna get these bucks that defy the odds. So you never know, you gotta, you gotta put your time in. Uh, you, can, you can have a good plan, but uh, at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to just being in the right place at the right time and having the kind of luck fall your way. I'm fortunate as a landowner here in Iowa that I can get two tags that I can fill prior to the late season with my bow. So I've got another one, and we still have a couple of weeks here as we build up to November. The action's gonna get more and more hectic and fast-paced each day. And I can't wait now. I mean, I've got, I've got a great buck uh, on the ground. So it, 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 it sort of takes some of the pressure off, if you wanna call it that, or just sort of gives you a, a sense of being able to relax and, and have the rest of the season sort of play itself out. I can't wait until we get into the rut and we get into the month of November. It's been a couple of days now since I've killed Lefty and it was a, such a tremendous privilege to be able to hunt a deer like that. That I've had so much history with. Just a big, cool old buck. I appreciate all the comments and congratulations that I've gotten from our viewers. Thank you very much for that. Well, my hunt's about ready to wrap up this evening, but you can keep checking back to the website and go to the Winkies blog for my daily video blogs. And every time I hunt, I'll be posting, uh, we will be posting a video blog from that day. Well, that's it for today's episode. I appreciate you joining me. I'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.